about 20 minutes and then we'll conclude our day with a prayer of blessing for all you readers. Um, lectures, thank you. Lectures. <laughs> Boy, he got that real quick. Good. Good. Someone, yes, wonderful. Good. Somebody was listening. Someone was listening. <laughs> the, um, the book of blessings where I pulled that liturgy from for the, the is it's the order of blessing for readers. I'm like, no, 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 <laughs> lectures, lectures, after all, everything I've read in the introduction to the lectionary, it's lectures, so, anywho. Number one complaint I hear about lectures from people in the pews is? Too fast. Too fast. Okay. Slow down, if you think you're reading too quickly, or you're reading too slowly, you're probably just right, okay? Um, uh, and pausing and rhythm can help you read, or can help you proclaim in a more effective manner. Pausing and rhythm can help you slow you down a little bit more. This is why, you know, Preparing more than just once in the week is essential because if you, I can tell when a lector hasn't prepared um, or has prepared minimally because they read rather quickly, especially if they're not, if, if I'm not accustomed to hearing them read rather quickly, okay? When we're not familiar with the reading, the faster we read, okay? So the more you are familiar with the reading, and I'm not talking about memorizing. I'm just talking about you know kind of the cadence that you want to use, the pace you want to use, you know where the pauses are, you've practiced a few different ways of proclaiming it in, you know, at home in front of the mirror or in front of a spouse, okay, that you'll naturally slow down. Okay. Reverberation is a thing in churches. Um, especially empty churches. Carpet kind of drowns that out, but it's still, I mean, even without a microphone, there's a reverberation in here. Okay. <clears throat> Use pauses to convey meaning. Right? Use your, your punctuation in the reading is, is a friend. Okay? Commas, semicolons, dashes, they get a little pause, or maybe a slightly longer pause, depending on the context, all right? Periods are full stop pauses. In your reading, kind of hard to see, um, the readings here are split into sense lines, okay? So never read from a missalette, because a missalette is just one big paragraph. Okay. Always read from a lectionary or, you know, even if you, if you, um, some people I know, they have, um, they have their lector workbook, and because of um, uh, vision issues, they have to print out enlarged copies of their reading. Okay. Um, that's fine too, you just set it on the ambo when you go up to look at it one last time. Don't, bring, don't be bringing pieces of paper up with you, all right? But you'll notice a sense line. So semicolons, uh, commas, colon, uh, semicolons, especially, and commas, pause, okay? You may, not take, you may not need to take a breath in the pause, it's kind of like a half pause, depending on the thought, okay? But sometimes if, if you have just completed a full thought, you take a longer pause. Period. Pause. Yes? So one of the ways I've learned to aid with that is period full stop, look up. That's yep. congregation. So I made a point. Our Lord Jesus Christ said. And you move on. And we, yeah. <clears throat> That's good. Um, the... 
in, in the reading, there are also white lines. There are line breaks. It's kind of hard to see here. But there's, it, it looks like a paragraph break or a line break. Perfect indication there's a pause. Okay, that's a good place to look up. Let the echo die down. Okay. Um, now, there is a challenge with pausing because you can pause too much. And so then if you pause too much, the reading becomes stilted and it loses, it loses its power because it's not connected. So an example of that, the Lord God opens my ear that I may hear and I have not rebelled, have not turned back. I gave my back to those who beat me, my cheeks to those who plucked my beard. My face I did not shield from buffets and spitting. So I paused at the end of each line, but that was, you notice how that was too much? The reading started getting stilted. So sometimes when you come to the end of a line, you just continue. There's no punctuation and you just continue. Let's read it like it's in Chisholm. This is an example. <laughs> I really like this. Gave you the bad exam? No. Well, how, would I, how about you? Read that. I don't like it. Who would like to practice? Uh, now, now, you've not seen this reading, so if anyone wants to try it, just with pausing and pacing. Come on, yes. <laughs> Just read the first. Thank you. <laughs> go, go to the ambo. Go to the ambo. Right there, right there. Whoa. No, no, in front of the ambo as if, okay. as if you're right. proclaiming. Well, well, we'll move you. Buffett's at the very end, where you yeah. said, and from Buffett's, from Buffett's and yes, there was a pause there that yeah. you probably could have just gone right through. Gone from and Buffett's, Buffett's and spitting. Okay. That, would be, that was the only thing. We tend to pause more because we tend to pause more because we want a sense of reverence and solemnity at Mass. But be wary of that. Not reverence and solemnity. Be wary of, of using, overdoing pauses and, 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 and breaks to carry on a, a form of reverence. You know, I need to read very, 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 very slowly out of a sense of reverence. Read St. Paul's. Be very careful. St. Paul is tricky, yeah. Um, when I work with sound systems and I work with audio engineers, I always, and I work with parishes, and I always say, you know, if a parish has a speaker right behind the ambo, I always ask if it would be possible to move or angle that speaker differently so that it's not coming right, right to the, to the, to the ambo or to the ambo. 
um, for two reasons. One, because of the effect it has on the lector, for the very reason you said. And secondly, the chances of you getting reverber, uh, giving feedback from the microphone just goes up exponentially, okay? Where there's more popping and there's more feed, you know, loop feedback and everything. So I always ask if there's a speaker, I always ask a sound professional, is it possible to maybe turn the speaker a few degrees in another direction, make it go up, make it go down? Sometimes the answer is yes, sometimes the answer is no, depending on the space. So if there is a speaker behind, first of all, maybe that's something that can be checked. Is, is it possible to, to do something with the speaker behind? That would, you know. But then also, if you, you know, be aware of the speaker behind you, okay? And the loudness that you're hearing is not what, it does not translate out to what the assembly is hearing. And I know what they're saying when you can hear it, but when we're sitting behind, like like we're up on the side altar, you know, when we, I can hardly hear these people. Yeah. So yeah. it just depends on how it is. So just be aware. I mean, you're hearing aids out. Yeah, be aware. You know, know where the speakers are. Be aware of that. Okay, yeah. Be aware of that and adjust your vocal energy accordingly. I want you to start, stop thinking about volume, and I've said this before, right? Stop thinking about volume, because that's just a, think about the energy with which you project. And you're not necessarily projecting into the microphone, although you are, because you're using the microphone, but remember, your energy is projected out to the last person in the last pew. Have someone, before Mass though, have someone go back and, and it is okay to do a small test of the sound system, to do a sound check, you know. Just start, have someone walk in the back and just read the first two lines of your reading. Our microphone is very movable. Yep, and, and move it. Don't be afraid to move, yep. Don't be afraid to move the microphone. Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Yeah, don't, whatever you don't, don't do it. Test one, two, three, no, don't do that. Just practice the first line or the first two lines of the reading. As, because people are praying and whatnot, so you don't want to, you don't want to carry on a conversation. But if you, you know, just read and just get a sound check. Sound checks are perfectly fine in liturgy, uh, before liturgy begins. Um, it is okay to adjust the microphone. The general, the general point is that your, is everyone hands up, hand up, spirit fingers, okay? That should be roughly the distance. If you have the right vocal energy, that should be roughly the distance between your lips and the microphone, okay? Now, if you have a very sensitive microphone, you might go a little further out. If you have a microphone that can't pick up worth anything, <laughs> you might need to go in a little closer. Okay. But this one is roughly the general general consensus. Now, you don't want to be, this you can do, you know, this you can do just very discreetly before mass when you check. Don't come up for the first reading and do this. <laughs> okay. Make that check. And then just kind of eye it because, you know, Deacon may come up, you know, before any name change. And so you'll need to at least have a general sense of where the microphone was. Okay? So, spirit fingers is roughly the, the point. Microphone typically points directly to your mouth. However, if you have a tendency of popping peas, Go slightly over, go slightly, oh, go, I'm sorry, slightly under. Point it towards your chin. So the air goes over the microphone, not into the microphone. Okay. 
If you don't have a problem popping your peas, or you pop only occasionally, <laughs> um, <laughs> is it two o'clock yet? <laughs> okay, it's almost two. Close. Um, popping peas. Uh, keep your microphone directly at your mouth. Whatever you do, don't have it way up here. Don't have it way down here. That's when you get no one hearing you and you get all sorts of feedback. All right. But don't be afraid of touching the microphone, even if it causes some crackling. Okay. What you don't want to do is grab the microphone by the head. Don't do this. And move it. Always move it by the stem. Are in all four churches or three churches, are the are the mic is the microphone movable at the ambo? Yeah. Okay. Some more difficult than others. Yeah. If it starts crackling while you're reading, can you stop before the crackling stops? Pause. Yes, pause. A lot of it is feedback. It'll be that high pitched, woo, you know, feedback. Um, pause. Stop. Stop the reading. And if it continues, it should, have, it should die down within a few seconds. If it continues, move the microphone, either move it, try moving it down first to kill whatever, but it's basically, it's, it's getting feedback from a speaker. So move it, you know, at St. Mary's, if there's feedback, the microphone just might be just pointed just enough at that speaker where it's getting, so move it away from the speaker. If you're getting we think it was father's portable. Oh, I think it is. That could be too, yeah. Father's portable mic. Um, new new mic technology has the ability to sense when there's competing mic and it'll turn it'll turn off the portable mic. But an older system won't do that. You'll have to do it. Father will have to turn off a mic by himself. Yes. Saint, yeah. Saint Paul, who forgot, who slept through his classes on commons. Um, the best advice I can give you is know the reading. Prepare the reading as much as possible. And don't break up incomplete thoughts. Only pause once you have a full and complete thought. Okay? which can be tricky because with Paul, Paul uses in the Greek, there are so many dependent clauses. This, this phrase depends on this phrase, and this phrase depends on this phrase. So you may have to pause to catch your breath because we don't want you passing out. Okay. But don't make a full stop pause until you have completed a thought. Okay. Uh, open up your practice reading. Practice reading number three. Okay. Counting the complete thoughts in that first, uh, skip brothers and sisters. So from since we have been justified by faith, we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Those lines, how many complete thoughts are in those lines? I have three, I have five, seven, complete thoughts in the, in the first, from since we have been justified by faith, and then end at we boast in the hope of the glory of God. We have one. All right. So one, we have one, two, three. I don't think we had four. Four, four. Do I, I have five in the back. Five complete thoughts. This is the challenge with St. Paul. This is where you have to take the reading apart line by line. So let's do that, just these lines. 
Since we have been justified by faith. Is that a complete thought? Yes. Because of the word since. We need, if it were just, we have been justified by faith, that would be a complete thought. But Paul, we have since we have been just, we're waiting for more information. Since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Complete thought. One complete thought. Okay. Through whom we have gained access by faith. Is that a complete thought? No, that is connected to... To this grace in which we stand. So, so then you have two. So, through whom we have gained access by faith to this grace in which we stand. Is that a complete thought? No. Why? Because he's talking about the church. Is he? He's talking about the church. Yes. By face, all that refers to our Lord Jesus Christ. Yes, so right now we still have one thought. Since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith, because that goes back to Jesus Christ, to this grace in which we stand, okay, which talks about what faith does, so we got one, one complete thought, and we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Yep, go ahead. But you, you, you have to call differently than just that, that those two. <clears throat> you can't get all of those words out. No, because if you, if, you, if you just That's try to take... Saying, we, shouldn't pause, we should only pause at the end of the complete thought. Right, so you should only pause fully at the end of a complete thought. If you need to take a breath, which you will... <laughs> okay. Um... And you have commas, commas in there. So your commas would tell me because your commas come in the midst of, in the midst of completing that thought. They don't come at the end. It's not a semicolon. They come in the middle of that thought. That your pause is not a full stop pause. Okay. Your full stop. You have one full stop pause where you stop and let the thought sink in. But you have multiple, multiple smaller pauses in between. So how would you read that? Just go ahead. How would you read that? Given that it's two full thoughts. Brothers and sisters, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith to this grace which we stand. And we boast in hope of the glory of God. You used a technique of word emphasis. Your word emphasis helped keep thoughts together. It helped connect them, okay, while slowing you down and not blurring everything together. The only, the only modification I would make in that problem, and not to say that the only way I would say, I would kind of read that, but I would pause before saying, and we boast in the hope of the glory of God, to let that, set that apart a little bit more. So, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith to this grace in which we stand. And we boast in the hope of the glory of God. Two thoughts. Brothers and sisters. Oh, brothers and half. <laughs> I said omit brothers and sisters. Woo! It's hard to read him sometimes because it's like. Yeah, Paul is. Paul is crazy. Awesome. Yeah. All right. Anything else? We're going to conclude with a little prayer. All right. Would one of us or two of us care to read? Or three of us? We can do three readers. One, two, three. Okay, so I have the readings here. So if you would take the first reading here, so Timothy. Uh, do it the pulpit, yep. And then second reader will have the responsorial song right afterwards. 
And then after the blessing, or before the blessing, they'll be out the queue you when to go up to the intercessions. <clears throat> yes. Yeah, go ahead. <laughs> All right. Um, this is a blessing from the Book of Blessings, which is one of those ritual books I've talked about. There are, I think, 70-some blessings, and one of them is a blessing for lectors. I've changed the title from readers to lectors. Um, it, involve, it, it does include a reading from the Word of God, a little introduction, and then the intercessions, and then to conclude the intercessions is a prayer of blessing. So um, we'll give everyone a chance to look at the reading and the psalm, um, but we'll, um, you know, we'll have Deacon lead it, and um, we'll just stand for the beginning, um, sit for the readings, you don't have to stand now, we'll give everyone a few moments, and then stand for the intercessions and blessing, and that'll be it. Do we want to sing a song? Do we have hymnals? Yeah. this book all the time. I'm right here the looking for the index. <laughs> At the end. 951. 951? Okay. We're just reviewing. Um, do, do you want to review the responsorial? Well, who's, who's reading? Oh, you're responsorial. That's the second page. Do you want to look at it very quickly? Let's do... When scripture is read in the liturgy, God speaks to us and calls us to respond in faith and love. The ministry of lector, then, is important to the life of the church, for the lector proclaims God's living word. We ask God to bless these lectors and all gathered here who support those called to proclaim God's word. Please be seated now as we listen to the word of the Lord. Reading from the 
second letter of St. Paul, Timothy. Beloved, I charge you in the presence of God and Christ Jesus, who will judge the living and the dead, and by his appearing and his kingly power, proclaim the word. Be persistent, whether it's convenient or inconvenient. Convenience, reprimand, encourage through all patience and teaching. For the time will come when people will not tolerate sound doctrine, but following their own desires and insatiable curiosity will accumulate teachers and will stop listening to the truth and will be diverted to myths. But you, be self-possessed in all circumstances. Put up with hardship, perform the work of an evangelist, fulfill your ministry. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. Your, Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. The law of the Lord is perfect, refreshing the soul. The decree of the Lord is trustworthy, giving wisdom to the simple. Your, Your words, words, Lord, are, are spirit and life. life. The precepts of the Lord are bright, rejoicing the heart. The command of the Lord is clear, enlightening the eye. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. The fear of the Lord is pure, enduring forever. <coughs> the ordinances of the Lord are true, all of them just. Your words, Lord, are spirit and life. They are more precious than gold, than a heap of purest gold. Sweeter also than syrup, or honey from the comb. Your, Your words, Lord, 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 are spirit and life. God calls us out of darkness into the light of faith. With the confidence of God's children, let us ask the Lord to hear our prayers and to bless these readers. For the church, that we may continue to respond to the word of God, which is proclaimed in our midst, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For all who listen as the scriptures are proclaimed, that God's word may find in them a fruitful field. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For those who have not heard the message of Christ, that we may be willing to bring them the good news of salvation. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the church, that we may continue to respond to the word of God which is proclaimed in our midst. We pray. Lord, hear our prayer. For the lectors of our churches, that with deep faith and confident voice, they may announce God's saving word, we pray. Lord, hear our prayer. Bringing all our prayers into one. We pray the words our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, 
as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Everlasting God, when he read in the synagogue of Nazareth, your son proclaimed the good news of salvation, for which he would give up his life. Bless these lectors as they proclaim your words of life. Strengthen their faith that they may read with conviction and boldness and put into practice what they read. We ask this through Christ our Lord. Amen. May the word of God in all its richness dwell in your hearts and minds now and forever. Amen. Amen. And may Almighty God bless you in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Go in the Spirit and love of Christ. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Well, thank you, everyone. I hope this was fruitful for you. And um, as, as, uh, we've got the last minute, last, last camera look. Uh, as, as Deacon uh, prayed over us, Proclaim with conviction and boldness in your ministry. God bless you. Thank you, Joshua.